Welcome to the Greenwood Genetic Center. Uh, I'm Steve Skinner, uh, director of the Greenwood Genetic Center. Um, this is an exciting year for us. It's the 40th year of our existence. Uh, we are a nonprofit genetic institute serving the state of South Carolina. We are uh, based in Greenwood, South Carolina, but have offices around the state. We provide uh, a broad base of clinical genetic services, uh, focusing mostly on individuals with intellectual disability, autism, and birth defects, but also seeing a wider uh, array of uh, uh, genetic uh, conditions for patients we serve. In addition to clinical services, we provide a broad uh, base of diagnostic laboratory services, uh, including uh, molecular, biochemical, and uh, cytogenetic uh, genetic testing. Uh, we also have a strong commitment and focus on educational activities, providing education uh, to high school students, high school teachers, uh, undergraduate uh, uh, internship experiences, as well as uh, graduate education experiences here on our campus in Greenwood. We also have a strong commitment to research, uh, looking uh, at research identifying genes associated with intellectual disability and birth defects. Uh, we've been serving the state for 40 years, but are very excited about some recent announcements uh, with uh, collaboration with Clemson University, expanding our uh, research capacity here in Greenwood. Some of the exciting uh, advances uh, is in technology. Uh, the first human genome project uh, took 13 years to complete. It took almost $3 billion to complete and took multiple labs in 15 countries around the world to sequence the human genome the first time. Uh, we can now sequence a human genome in uh, a day uh, with new technology. And the cost has come down from that $3 billion mark to uh, somewhere around six dollars to $10,000 now. The goal is to get that down to where we can do it for $1,000 or less and, uh, in, a, in a few hours. Yeah, there, there are several initiatives, I guess, that we're particularly proud of at the Green Genetic Center. One uh, is our neural tube defect prevention uh, program. Um, in the early 90s, uh, it was discovered elsewhere that a simple uh, vitamin, folic acid, a B vitamin, uh, could prevent a large portion of neural tube defects. Neural tube defects are defects of the developing brain and spinal cord. Once that information became known, we went to work with uh, the CDC, uh, March of Dimes, uh, South Carolina Department of Disability and Special Needs, and South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control to develop a program within the state of South Carolina to, uh, one, uh, uh, do a surveillance program to find out what the incidence of neural tube defects was in the state, uh, to identify them when they occurred, but to start a massive uh, public education program for families, uh, particularly women of childbearing age, about the importance of uh, uh, folic acid. Uh, physicians, so that they would be promoting it in their obstetrician's office, in the obstetrician's office, in the pediatrician's office, and then identifying families that are high risk that had already had one child, so to make sure they knew the importance of being on folic acid for any subsequent pregnancies. Every year there are 70 babies born without a neural tube defect that prior to this program would have had one. So, so that's a, something we're particularly proud of, uh, that we still have work to do. There are still a lot of women that haven't heard the story about folic acid. Uh, one other program that we're uh, particularly uh, uh, proud about at the Green Jack Center is uh, our metabolic uh, treatment program. In uh, 2004 in South Carolina, the newborn screening was greatly expanded, going from six conditions to 33 conditions. What to do with those abnormal screen results, how to, to prove that the baby does or doesn't have a particular genetic condition, and what to do from a treatment st standpoint. Uh, is a challenge for many practitioners. As soon as a, a newborn metabolic screening comes back with a potential abnormality, uh, our team is notified as well as the primary care physician. We contact both the family and the primary care physician to, uh, to take them through the next steps. Uh, what testing is needed to, to confirm whether there is or isn't a diagnosis, what treatment initiatives are, are needed to be implemented right now, and then we monitor those patients throughout the rest of their life if, if needed. We think we'll see an expansion of this program in the, in the near future.